Welcome to Let's Write This Movie, where we write a screenplay while sharing the process with the internet. I am your screenwriter, Renee Garcia. And I'm your collaborator, Brian Glass. Now, let's write this movie. And we're rolling. Greetings, YouTube. So I've been, <clears throat> I've been playing video games today, Brian. I haven't played video games in forever, and I'm a game junkie. Yeah. So uh, l let me just back up here. I have other things to do today other than this thing, this project, this thing that we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, that's why I have my backdrop set up for this other thing I have to do. And I don't know. I think maybe it was my own little kind of rebellion. And why do I have to do this other thing today when I have the rest of the week to do it? Yes. Normally, right? Like, why does that stuff spill into my personal time? And so I just said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just play, like, video games for a little bit. And anyone who knows me, uh, I'm a, I am was a video game junkie. The kind of guy who will, like, just marathon session it, right? Like, there's a, there's a phrase now um, in, the video, in video game culture called poop sock. And it's when you play a game <laughs> that you're not, you're not even going to break away from it. You're just going to, like, poop in an article of clothing. And usually it's just like a sock, right? So... So wow. this is, I think it, it originated with uh, video game journalism mm. where, you know, you're under deadline. I got to get this review in, but I haven't played enough of the game. So I'm just going to poop sock it. Okay. I know enough to write the review. Anyway. So I was poop socking before poop socking was a thing, but not literally. Right. Like I, it's just a marathon session, yeah. you know, it'd be like three in the morning and you know, you're like, oh man, I think I should probably like sleep. Like, I've already for, foregone uh, showering and eating all day. <laughs> I should at least sleep, right? No, we got to do the triumphant well, for all of it. you know, I would sleep for like an hour. I would like nap. Yeah. And then I'd wake up and be like, yeah, that was enough. Time to play video games again. Oh, man. And there you go. That nice. was my life for a long time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, I, yeah, like I said, I haven't, I, I work so much that I have no time to like, for any kind of entertainment, unless it's there's some kind of financial uh, connection reward. <laughs> or reward, whatever, you know, a um, well, financial reason to do it. Sure. And uh, yeah, so today, I like I said, I decided to play a little bit and just the hours just fell off the clock, you know. Well, that's what I was going to ask. So this was not games that you were reviewing. This is games just for, for total pleasure. Just for fun. Good and for I had you, man. a lot of fun. But anyway, you. the reason I bring this up is my hair is like garbage right now because I jumped out of the shower. I was prepared to like set up my my apartment for this other thing. And I was going to do my hair and all of that. And then I just sat down and started playing. And I have a headset that goes over my hair, my head. And so like I've got this like divot right now, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's kind of bothering me. So I didn't gel my hair or anything, didn't shave. So I'm just going to, I did not gel my hair. You should be fine. All right. Matchy, matchy today. Exactly. <laughs> it's like looking in the mirror. Anyway, enough of me, Brian, you sound, uh, you sound not well. Yeah. Um, in so many ways, Renee, in so many ways, uh, give, this me, week was, give me the first one. The first one is I was away this for, for most of the week at a country in Spain and I just returned yesterday and, um, I'm still very much on their time zone. Mm. So for me, at the time we are recording here in America, uh, this is about 3 a.m. Spanish time. So I am, uh, and I'm kind of out of it from that vantage point because I'm trying to get my sleep pattern back and, yeah. and whatnot. And um, last night I went to bed at 11 o'clock here and woke up at five, <laughs> you know, and then I took a nap in the middle of the day and I had lunch like at four. Mm. You know, I'm just totally out of it. And, um, I was fortunate enough to get sick while I was there. So I picked up a cold, Yeah, which was, which was great, great timing. So now I'm going to be wheezing this entire time, possibly sneezing and coughing later. And, uh, one of my ears is plugged up. So I'm, I'm pretty ready for this show, man. I'm pretty psyched. Fantastic. <laughs> there you go. Emphysema. <laughs> ASMR cold. Exactly. Listen to my scratchy throat. Exactly. 
shouldn't do that. Yeah, don't laugh, Brian. There you <laughs> exactly. Go. Please yeah. do not entertain me this uh, this show, please. Okay, all, I won't. Possible. No problem. You know, as I I put up the pages today, way late. I know. Apologies, everybody. So there's a post I missed. Uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Uh, but I like reading the post though. Oh, okay. Would you like to pause while? No, no. Read, you, keep, I'll just keep, keep talking. talking while you keep. read, and you'll pretend to listen. What's that now? Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, and I, I'd said, spoiler, Brian, spoiler, that after last week's marathon session, I wouldn't mind having a shorter session today. Yeah. So I'm not too upset that I only turned in five pages or so. Plus, last uh, time I turned in 10, like, je- like, new pages, that was like a long episode. Yeah. And last week was a long episode, and you did so much work. Yeah. That uh, um, I, I would, I'm fine with this. First off, from that vantage point. Second off, because I'm not feeling so great. There you go. So uh, I think perfect timing for that. I love it. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> exactly. So good job. Yeah. Looking um, forward to pages 73 on. I, I am. I am actually pretty happy with these pages, though. I feel like a lot, a lot was accomplished, and a lot uh, was like some good character development that I wasn't planning on having but yeah we'll get into that absolutely so that's all i really have brian yeah me functioning is all you're gonna get so i'll do my best to do that okay <laughs> so you want, should we get on to the uh, to the read are, are you up to read? oh yeah raspy baby oh man here we go bring the rasp okay let me just get okay so <clears throat> we have the pages up brian all right let and... us start with Sally Saloon. All right. <clears throat> all right. I'm doing it from the screen, so I can't see you at all. So are you ready to go? I am ready. Here we go. Interior, Sally Saloon, continuous. Sally has just finished catching Sam up on recent events. Sally. So. <laughs> I, I didn't practice her voice today at all, but that's I fine. could probably just do it normal for you. Exactly. I sound like Sally now. <laughs> so... I'm sorry that you came all this way for nothing. Sam. Like hell I did. Zeke. Didn't you hear? Oh, God. Sally and Zeke. (laughs) What is Zeke's voice again? Well, whatever. Didn't didn't you hear us? Long is in jail and his brother is dead. Why is Everett here? Uh, I don't know what to tell you, Brian. I didn't didn't rehearse any of this. I was too busy playing video games. (laughs) (laughs) Sam. (laughs) <laughs> oh man, that laugh, Brian, that laugh. Jeez. Oh, uh, you want me to mute myself? No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Sam. I heard you just fine. Can't say I'm sorry to see him go. Sally. He was our friend, son of a bitch. Sam. <coughs> nothing personal. I just don't think I just don't think he had it in him to kill a man, which is mighty important if you're fixing to rob a bank. Zeke. Wait, you, you're still thinking about robbing the bank? Even with all this craziness in town? Sam, damn right. It's the perfect time. Zeke, no, the sheriff and the marshal are ready for anything now. Prophet's got too many guards. The three of us ain't enough. We need long. Sam looks at Zeke, then Sally, then signs, <clears throat> then sighs resignedly. Interior jail. Minutes later, Long looks Carl over suspiciously. Carl sweats profusely. Sam, off screen. Told you I'd come in handy. Long looks for the source of the voice and sees the high window in his cell. He stands on the bench to get closer. Long, Sam, (coughs) is that you? Sam, off screen. The one and only. Long, what are you doing here? Sam. Off screen. If I recall, you promised me a big payday. I'm here to collect. Long. Well, I can't do much from in here. Sam. Off screen. Your confederate said the same. That's why I'm gonna bust you out. Just sit tight. Wait for my signal. Sam can be heard walking away. Long nods to himself. Exterior, epitaph, continuous. The sun sets, giving rise to a moonless night. 
Interior, Sally Saloon. Patrick, the bank clerk, enters. He approaches the bar. Sally. Patrick! <clears throat> I thought you only drank at the end of the week. Patrick. Normally, yes, but that Jane has been following me all day. She's starting to scare me. Sally. You're in luck. <coughs> I've got liquid courage to spare. What'll it be? Patrick thinks. The man next to him spits in the spittoon between them. His spit is green and sizzles with an acidic hiss. Patrick faces him, but the man looks through him. Patrick. Maybe I'll just go home after all. He exits. Sally. Suit yourself. Sally pours beer from the keg that's stained by Bill's spit. Exterior, Sally's saloon, continuous. Patrick looks around timidly. A yoo draws his attention. He sees a courtesan standing on the Nine Lives veranda ogling him. Patrick smiles and begins to walk over. Another courtesan appears on the veranda. She yoo at him. Patrick continues, but then another courtesan appears on the veranda, then another in a window, then another in a separate window. They all yoo like a mix between a hunter's and a siren's call and gaze at Patrick hungrily. He slows. More women appear, yoo In the dim light, green speckles scintillate on their skin. Patrick turns to leave and comes face to face with plain Jane. <laughs> plain Jane. <laughs> he loves me. Patrick runs away, frightened. Plain Jane. He loves me not. Interior. Boone's quarters. Continuous. George Boone, 50, the bank manager, is eating supper in his fastidious room when someone knocks at his door. He gets up to answer, revealing... Prophet. Good morning, George. George. I don't know the voice for George, so I'm just going to use a normal voice. M Mr. Prophet, you're early. <clears throat> Prophet. The transport is on its way. I just want to take inventory of my property before it leaves my sight. George. Sir, the vault is a Hamilton Class 3, sealed airtight. Your property is secure. Now, if you'll excuse me... I'd like to finish my supper. He begins to close the door, but a strong hand forces it open, revealing large men behind Prophet carrying rifles. Prophet, listen here, George. I didn't get to be where I'm at by taking my eyes off what's mine. So you're going to go downstairs and you're going to open that vault and we're going to wait together. Now, let's go. Exterior, Grand Hotel, continuous. Stan and Everett patrol the streets. <clears throat> Stan, and <clears throat> Stan and Everett patrol the streets together. Uneasy. Everett. Looks like things are getting back to normal. Stan. Yep. The men walk, looking around, avoiding each other's eyes. Everett. Look. About that hanging. Stan. Marshall. I'm the law here. Don't give me a. Oh. Don't talk to me about jurisdiction. Everett, I wasn't. I want to know what kind of lawman you want to be. Peace officers can't give in to emotion. We have rules for a reason, and we have to uphold them just as we live by them. Once we rely on mob justice, there's nothing that separates us from the outlaws. Stan, any jury would have found that man guilty. He'd swung just the same. Everett. Then let the jury do its job. You do their job for them, someone else is going to do your job for you. Then it's everyone for themselves, acting as judge, jury, and executioner. Sooner or later, someone you care about is going to get hurt. Everett walks ahead of Stan when he sees Maggie, Ray, and Tommy at the entrance of the hotel. Everett greets them. Exterior, abandoned storefront, continuous. An outpost soldier stands guard in this mostly empty part of town. He looks over his shoulder at the building, where the infected and undead bang around inside. Sam walks up. Sam. Hey, <clears throat> partner. You got a match? He pretends to hold a cigarette to his mouth. The soldier obliges and strikes a match, cupping it to Sam's face. Sam decks the shoulder cleanly, knocking him out. He walks up to a boarded window and peers inside. Interior, abandoned storefront, continuous. All manner of infected and undead bump into each other, moan, scratch, bang, and mutter. A courtesan senses Sam. 
Exterior, abandoned storefront, continuous. A courtesan's arm breaks through the glass and claws at Sam with bony fingers. Hang on, Brian. Sam, yep. <clears throat> you want me to, to read the rest here? Nope. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> the courtesan's arm breaks through the glass and claws at Sam with bony fingers. Sam falls back and laughs in surprise. Sam. Oh, this is gonna be good. He goes to the door and rips off the wood planks. The activity inside the building becomes louder. With the barricade gone, Sam turns the doorknob and cracks the door open. Then he runs for it. The door flies open. Undead and infected spill out. Most infected run off in different directions. The undead shuffle out. Some stop at the unconscious soldier and begin biting him. He wakes and screams in pain and fear, struggling to get away. A spitter infected falls on the soldier and spits green bile on his face. The soldier is helpless as the acid melts through his features. Other outpost soldiers arrive and draw their weapons, unsure if they should attack. A you who infected courtesan appears in the shadows, her body sparkling in meteor meteorite dust. She you who's at a soldier who turns to face her. He's distracted at, by her beauty, and she's able to rip his throat out with her claws. The soldiers fire. Hang banging, <coughs> excuse me, head banging infected burst from the abandoned storefront and charge. The soldiers aim for their heads, but they seem almost armored by bone from where, they're, where, where they've been smashing their faces against the wall. The headbangers run the soldiers down. Exterior, Grand Hotel, continuous. Everett is walking Maggie to the entrance when the report of gunfire and screams in the distance draws his attention. He looks for Stan, who is also looking in the direction of the commotion. The two lawmen run to the source. Exterior, storefront, continuous. Position has been overrun by the time Stan and Everett arrive. Outpost soldiers retreat, and bodies of, of town folk litter the ground while undead feast on them. Small fires burn where lanterns fell, revealing grisly scenes. Horses have been felled and eaten. Others break free from their hitching posts <clears throat> and run off into the night. While Stan and Everett make sense of what they're seeing, the bodies on the ground rise around them. The men fight their way out. The end. Hooray. Good job, Brian. You made it. <laughs> I did. I only had a kind of a loss of uh, loss there once. <clears throat> you know, the funny thing, Renee, is that um, just a little behind the scenes thing. Since I was traveling, um, I didn't have time to print out the pages and write my stuff, so I had to do it digitally. And uh, the only way I could do it on on uh, Adobe uh, Acrobat is to put the little notes. Mm. You know, yeah. and so uh, which is great. I mean, it's fine. I just have to open each one to, to read what they are. Yeah. But as I'm reading, especially all of the action, wherever I had comments, it just puts a note there. Uh, so I'm trying to I'm trying to read to you and like move them out of the way because it's I, I'm, I can't I can't make out the words. Lovely. So, <laughs> so that was a bit of a struggle, but <laughs> uh, that was pretty fun. Hey, uh, so let me give you just a, a initial feedback here. Okay. Um, these pages, uh, I, I thought they were really good. Um, I, I, uh, I thought you packed a lot of stuff into here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I felt totally. like, uh, we, I mean, we, we shifted there, you know, I'm, I didn't count how many places we went to, but there were a lot of characters in five new pages and it didn't feel rushed. Right. So I was like, this is good. This is really good. This is like, I'm following all these threads now. And, um, I, I just, I, I really liked it. So, I'm not going to give you uh, any large notes on this today. Okay, um, great. Well, all before. I have is little things to talk about. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I would prefer that. It'll cut down my rendering time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, so before we get into the discussion, Brian, let me just uh, plug our properties here. So, okay, we I have the website up now, and everyone, you can... Visit our website. It is letswritethismovie.com. This is where I put up weekly pages, and after we record these episodes, I also post them here. So you can always go to our website or find us on YouTube. And I don't know why I do this every time, but this is how a website works. You click on something. <laughs> how, does, how does a website work? Exactly. You click on things, and then you read. There are words. Wait, wait, wait. Slow down. I'm writing this down. Okay. <clears throat> Go on. Click. No. There is a PDF window as well. <clears throat> so this is where I insert all of the new pages every week, typically on Thursday evening. But sometimes I get lazy and I don't do it until a few hours 
before we're recording. <coughs> but when everything works the way it's supposed to, you get the pages ahead of our discussion. You get to leave comments, suggestions, questions, and then we will consider them, consider discussing them on our show. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we are on Twitter, and that is at WriteThisMovie. I try to post once a day. Uh, typically, I respond to everybody very quickly. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it if you, you've engaged with us here. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Um, I will also put up, put up links to our YouTube channel as well. So uh, we're, we are trying to grow our audience, and we would appreciate your activity. That is it. Anything you want to add, Brian? Yeah, I want to add something about our website. So I just read uh, your post. Yeah. And I need to weigh in on this. Two things I want to say about this uh, this little um, post you wrote. <clears throat> so you reference here um, that you read that in your in one of your um, social networks for current and aspiring film creatives. Yeah. That a so-called professional writes a script typically in thirty days. And then you, you know, you talked about kind of how you felt about that versus or with regards to how you've been doing on this show. And um, two things I want to say about that. First off, if you were doing nothing but writing a screenplay and not doing any work slash side work, yeah. um, I'm sure you could write a screenplay in much faster time than you are currently writing. So, you know, that's this is fine for someone who that's all they do. And that's great. And they, that he or she has earned that ability but that's i don't think that's what most people are going to be doing and secondly if you're writing a screenplay in 30 days even if that's all you do i bet that screenplay is pretty cruddy because you need to germinate on ideas and really let it you know uh if you want to write a good screenplay uh i, I don't i don't see that's going to be happening in 30 days i really don't yeah maybe let me, you're let me just, on hallmark let me just but. throw in something there so when i read that yeah on this forum it something clicked in my head and I realized, oh, so that's why industry movies are terrible, because people <laughs> are just crapping them out right. in 30 days. And here's, you know, here's the thing. Um, I got into marketing. Marketing is my day job, everybody. And I got into marketing via copywriting. So I have, you know, I've got really good copywriting chops. And I can turn around, and I worked. I worked for Brian, so Brian can vouch for me. Yes. Uh, and so I can turn around copy very quickly. Good but copy. it's well, fine. But you know, as a copywriter who's <laughs> under deadline, and sometimes these deadlines are just impossible. You you learn to cheat. You learn to rely on things that maybe you wrote before for right. another thing, and you say, you know what, that could work here. Right. And so that's why, you know, you look at Hollywood movies, not only are they relying on, on the three act structure, which I think is fine. I think it's good. There's a lot of variety in that structure. But a lot of these movies start to feel samey. And I think this explains why, because you have these people who just want to keep their jobs turn ar turning around, you know, uh, uh, feature films in 30 days. There we are. I, I also think that uh, a lot of those movies are the ones that have, you know, the first draft written by a writer and then it goes to someone else to punch up mm. because the first writers never give it the full, you know, it didn't get it didn't get them all the way they needed to be. It wasn't funny enough or it wasn't enough action or it wasn't whatever. Yeah. Inter interesting <laughs> enough. So they had to bring another writer and then they sometimes have to bring in a third writer, you know, who never gets credit in. And I mean, it's the silliness that happens in Hollywood, you know, rather than just have a good writer take his time. Or her time and write something correctly over you know three months i would think that'd be reasonable yeah so anyway this is as they say in uh in some of the, some of the lands that i was at i was in london for a while too rubbish this is rubbish <laughs> well now it's good to see sally again i think sally needs to come back every episode <laughs> even after death we need to have like a flashback just so i can hear her voice again <laughs> You know how they have those songs that, you know, like the musical uh, artists that they, you know, tie into a movie to help mm. kind of like cross promote and they normally get the, the first song in the credits. Yeah. I'm just going to have the actress who plays Sally sing <laughs> <laughs> just for you, Brian, I'm write an original song. Yeah. She'll sing. Uh, oh, Patrick boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, <coughs> oh, man. All right. All right, Brian. So Shall we get into it? Let's do it. So um, I'm going to go out of order just for a second because there's a note on here that I didn't get because um, it's it's a, the way you read something, mm. which, which changed uh, the context a little bit for me. It was a cold was, read, Brian, so I hope... No, no, it was, uh, it's your dialogue, and I know you know that stuff, though, because it's coming from your head. So. No, I know, but you, what I mean is, it. you know, when I write it, I wrote it a certain way, and then as I'm, like, performing it, like, <clears throat> you know, I have to, like, remember, oh, no, it's supposed to be said this way, you know what I mean? So, uh, I don't want to put too much weight on the performance, but go ahead. Okay, I think that this was absolutely intentional, so I just wanted to All note right. it real quick. So, at the bottom of 69, <clears throat> we've got... Uh, plain jane yeah we got oh. the, he loves me yeah yeah, we yeah, got the, yeah he loves me and then all of a sudden it's the, he loves me not yeah he, <laughs> it's gollum <laughs> <laughs> he precious <laughs> oh yeah i kind of sound more like him now. you do you sound exactly like him um yeah uh so that was uh not planned to be honest like okay uh, i i knew she that was going to be her dialogue but as far as delivery mm -hmm. i don't know that was spur of the moment um <coughs> during the read it just made sense to do that that you know i for, like uh, i had totally forgotten at this point she's already infected right right so we need to show that and i didn't you know i didn't do it in the description like maybe i could have said you know comes face to face with plain jane who is obviously infected yeah i mean it's gonna be it's gonna tie into one of those that i had about that a question i had so okay. if she if she is already here then um, you know, I don't know if it's just going to be, uh, just going to be her appearance that is affected or if it is going to be, you know, her, I don't know if you really want to say voice or something like that, but <clears throat> somehow I think it's okay to put a little stage direction in here. Yeah. If you, if you want to, to draw that out again, this is, this is kind of on the level of notes I'm going to be giving you today. No, They're that's fine. Yeah. Kind of superficial. All right. So let's, um, <laughs> Forget it. the first note was a joke to you so since you know i was keeping myself entertained so i'm not going to read that one that's for you for later okay so at the uh, bottom of 67 we have zeke and <clears throat> this is this is the conversation between zeke sam and sally and um when when Sam basically says, you know, um, he's talking about Bao being being killed. You, you know, he's our friend, blah, blah. Nothing personal. I just don't think he had it in him to kill a man, which is mighty important when you're fixing to rob a bank. I think it'd be good to add a line or two at this point of direction um, for the actor because uh, I'd like to see Zeke acknowledging what Sam said since he is right. You know what I mean? He makes a good point that um, it's important, even though he's, he is upset about it. And... Um, and then basically, like, like he's contemplated what he just said. And then he comes to that understanding that he still wants to rob a bank. So it's, it's like he gets this bewildered look on his face. So I kind of did my little head cannon between these two lines that that's what happened. That it's like, you know, when you're fixing to rob a bank, and he's just like, wait, you know what I mean? Like, I, I thought there'd be that kind of like shift. Like he had to, he's reacting to this death of a friend. You know, and then he has to kind of like tra change like his mental per his mental process a little bit. That now wait a second, you know, he has to regroup mentally a little bit. So I think yeah. that just that little break there, uh, like I said, a line or two, um, I think would would help kind of set that to the reader as well. I, I know I, I know you don't want to overdo that stuff, but I think that something like that. Otherwise, it just reads it reads like uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of missing something. I feel like I, I had to add it add it in there. I don't want to I don't want to be additive. All right. So, two thoughts here. One, uh, I was trying. Uh, I had I, there was no more room for another line. Like I was already trimming pauses. Like I had pauses in some of these lines, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I removed those because it was bumping into the yeah. it was pushing Zeke's three line dialogue at the end there into the next page. So this is already at the maximum line count for this page, right? So A, there's that. And then B, uh, I hear what you're saying. 
do you think that we should let the actor decide how they're going to react to that? Yes, but I want to make sure that the reader is clear that this is something that's getting, that's taking Zika off guard. That's that's my only concern. I know that an actor should be able to get that, but okay. I'm not how sure. How about this? Well. What if number, number and I have two points. My second point is that um, I would write it in there, and if you end up at 126 pages and we need to trim, then that would be a good candidate to go. All right, well, that's fine. And I, I, I think I have a compromise that's only going to take up a line, and I can remove. Well, I could remove <coughs> something. Well, you know what? When I go back after the first draft, mm -hmm. and I trim from like page 20 or something. Yeah. I'm sure this is going to be okay. So I probably shouldn't sweat it right now. No, it's too early. Yeah. So, but I can just put in uh, a, a, essentially a O'Reilly, you know, under Zeke, bewildered. Mm -hmm. How's that? Bewildered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay. So um, in, in the, um, the top quarter of 68 it says uh, sam looks at zeke then sally then sighs resignedly um the first time i read this for some reason i missed it because i read it through a few times like three times yeah i missed i missed the part about him sighing and i actually liked it a little bit better because i like sam being kind of myopic and driven to get the loot box you know what i mean right so here he's kind of like you know oh yeah okay bummer type of that's that's how i'm interpreting the size resignedly um but maybe he could give since since we're going to go directly after this into seeing him outside the jail or hearing him outside the jail um it's not like there's going to be a large gap w that needs a big payoff so it's almost like um if you meant it as <clears throat> if you meant it as a misdirect i think it doesn't work because it's gonna it follows directly after you know the the two scenes uh, follow one another but I like the idea of maybe him, you know, kind of either leaving out the, the sign um, or putting in something there where he, you know, makes some sort of gesture that sets up the next line. Um, I don't know if he arches an eyebrow or something like that. Like, hmm, I have another thought, you know, and then he shows up uh, at, at outside the, the jail. So um, I don't know which way to go there, but I don't I actually like it better without the sign because he's not resigned. He's the opposite. And I know that, you know. There may be a little bit of time that passes because it's minutes later, but for the most part, I think he came up with this little alternative plan pretty pretty quickly. Um, why is he not resigned? If you're resigned, that means he's... The way I was reading it was not that he's resigned that we, they need long. It was that he was resigned that, oh, yeah, the plan's messed up now. And we can't do anything because long's gone. You see, the, I know it's a fine point that I'm putting on it, which is kind of the point of today's today's research. Yeah, yeah, no, well. that's fine. I... But it's, again, it's more about like uh, the the plan's not going to work. And now, as the reader or as the viewer, I've got to put together that since that time he's come up with a plan, versus him being so trained on the goal that he's going to come up with something quickly. You know, gives him a little bit more power there in the at the end of the scene. Okay. Um... It's a thought. You don't need to, you know, <clears throat> resolve these. You don't need to take these notes. This is just a... No, no. That uh, I like to discuss these things, Brian. Whether or not I make that change after I okay. look at the man in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it's, you know, it's just good to have this extra, extra perspective. So I don't want you to feel like I'm just arguing with you. Um, so... The way I saw this was you saw Ocean's Eleven, right? Of course. And, you know, uh, there's a scene where Don Cheadle has been in the sewers and he's been he's covered in filth. And then he comes in and he's like, uh, you know, a bugger. well, he says something. Something like that. Yeah. <coughs> um, anyway. And he had, he's explaining like, oh, you know, they, they did this de they, the demolition, they did it wrong, and now they're doing it right. They're fixing it, so they're fixing the, pr the thing that we were going to do. Yeah. And like, we got to come up with something that knocks out all of the electricity uh, with an EMP blast, right? Mm. And they're like, where, where are you going to get that? And he just looks at them 
right? And he's uh, it's like, hmm, you know, like he's got an idea, mm-hmm. but he's not, you know, we know that he he has decided to do something. We just don't know what it is. And, it, you know, if you listen to the commentary track, that part yeah. actually hadn't been written yet. So they didn't know what the solution was. So Don Cheadle <laughs> just has to like ad lib this reaction, like, you know, and it's supposed mm-hmm. to be vague because right. they didn't know where they were going to go next. Um, and so that's what I wanted this to be, that Sam or Z, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Sam has decided, fine, if we need Long, I'm resigned to doing something drastic to get Long, which mm-hmm. is why he comes out and says, hey, I'm going to bust you out. He actually did say that before I chopped those that dialogue. He said something like, fine, then let's bust him out. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, why don't we just go to the next scene with Long and he's going to tell him that anyway. I love that he doesn't say that. I love that I know. it leads into the scene. And well, I think that's cool. I just, I, I'm bumping on those those three words. And by the way, I think that Cheadle says I'm, we're knickered, didn't he? Why did he, cho- why did he choose an English accent for that? I have no idea. It's so bizarre. Yeah, well, he likes to like challenge him. himself. Well, all right. <laughs> I like Don Cheadle as an actor. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> One of my favorite movies of his is Traitor. I don't know if it's really well known. Mm-mm. You should watch it. I think you'll like it. it, it he plays <clears throat> a, it's kind of an action role, but it's okay. like a smart action role. So uh, it's a movie I revisit often. One and, of my favorite movies has him as well, which is uh, Out of Sight. Oh, yeah, I know. I know it's one of your favorite movies. We've had this discussion. Not on the air. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in situations like this, it's common. He's going to give you a line out of it. <laughs> I've already disappeared it from my brain, Brian. Oh, man. I Put only back, remember, <clears throat> I only vaguely remember parts of it, like getting stuck in a trunk, George oh, Clooney yeah. and, and what's her face, Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, yeah. In a trunk, and that's supposed to be the meat cute. And I don't know how that works in any story. It worked and, really well in that and, story. What and else? then the other part that I remember is Michael Keaton essentially encouraging his daughter though i don't know how that works how they're related but anyway his daughter to yeah go go be with this felon or whatever that's his daughter right michael keaton no he was uh no i must have totally discombobulated that dennis farino is the is the dad who's michael keaton in that movie is michael keaton in that movie yeah yeah barely he uh, Michael Keaton jumped roles from Jackie Brown into this with the same with with this as the same um, kind of character, same character, same character. No, same exact character. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a little a little fun thing they did. <clears throat> so he jumped into that, and he's supposed to be like the guy who's courting Jennifer Lopez. He's courting he's her. FBI. He's an FBI agent. Yeah. Doesn't he incur? I thought he for some reason I thought he encouraged her to be with. George Clooney, who's this this felon? Awesome felon. No, well, he does not encourage her at all. Go back and watch it. I need yeah. to revisit it now, just so I can be sure of why I hate it so much. Oh yeah, you have many, many problems if you hate that movie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, Brian. <laughs> Listen, I'm not judging you, but uh, it's a problem with you. It's, nice. <laughs> hey, I'll give it a second chance. I'll give it a second chance. I'd be happy to watch that again. I think I watched it before I met you. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those... I had this ritual with a friend of mine. His name is Jason. And we would always go to Hollywood Video. This is when you could rent movies in an actual brick and mortar, folks. That's how old I am. And what we would do is we would get a movie that we thought we would like, which is like a, a Hollywood movie, right? And then we would get... A, just like a handful of horrible looking movies or like mi- like movies that we may want to watch or just movies that had interesting box art and we would play like you know roulette <laughs> with those movies <laughs> and, and which so, one did this one be today well uh i can't remember to be honest mm. I, can't, I think this was the <coughs> oh that movie ha- has like star power I've heard about this movie. I've wanted to see it. It's a Soderbergh movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me go and, and see what that's like. And we thought, I think we selected that as the good movie. 
and it turned out to be the bad one, Brian. Anyway, so the reason I bring this up, the whole ritual thing, is uh, I am notorious for pausing the movie and giving commentary while watching, which probably just irritated Jason to no end, but he never said anything. So, but I'm that, I, you know, that's what I would do. I'd pause and be like, you see what's happening here or whatever, right? Or why is this happening? I don't understand why <laughs> Michael Keaton is her dad. How, I don't, <laughs> how does that work? Yeah, aren't they around the same age? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I don't know what was happening. I think I was, uh, you know, I was just kind of tuned out at that point. There is a scene in there that can definitely turn you, though, like one way or the other. And okay. it has, like, had the, it has upset people in the moment, and then they kind of get over it because they realize uh, it's not necessarily is truly when, happening. When Ving Rames tries to help the old lady with her, her groceries, and she's like, yeah. I'm not paying you. Yeah, who does that? Who right? helps people with their groceries? Exactly. And why would you pay that man? That's what I'm saying. This is not believable at all. That part was like, what? what? Is this the 30s? What? What is this? Is he going to check her oil too? Pump her yes, gas? Ma'am. What? What are you saying? <laughs> yes, ma'am. You were uh, you were being facetious, and I actually you were being honest, and I was being facetious, dude. We can, can you break that? Is the scene? All right, we better stop. This will be soon become out of sight. Maybe that will be our next episode. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the virtues of out of sight. We'll do it. We'll do a out of sight live uh, viewing. You know, and you can pause it all you want. Yeah, there you, you know. go, and get it struck from YouTube and. Exactly. You know, immediately in the midstream. <laughs> but what we'll do is uh, we'll watch it, you know, and then we'll like reenact it as they're talking. So there's no copyright issue. I like that. You know, they did this. I don't know if you've seen this. Someone Shrek. reenacted uh, Princess Bride via <laughs> VR. Did you see this? <laughs> no. Okay. I kind of want to see it because I think that's so cool. Like, I think that's cool. Like, you know, it. it it's the stage performer in me mm. um, that thinks that's so awesome. Like, why do you need a set and all of that when you can have the set in VR? Granted, the character's mouths don't move right. and it's all blocky and stuff. But uh, I think I could still find entertainment in that. But yeah, we are very far true. afield from what we are here to do, Brian. Let's stay in the field for one more second. Okay. Did, you hear about, did you hear about the Shrek thing they're doing? Uh, yeah, that's actually been done before with other stuff. It has. The Star Wars movie, I think they did it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's interesting. People don't know what we're talking about because I didn't explain it. They need to look it up themselves. No, All Brian. Right. Explain it. Shrek. They're, they're doing a, sh- they're, they're breaking it down in, I think, 10 second segments or something like that. And they're doing shot for shot um, reenactment of the, of the movie, but in different styles. So yeah. some of it may be animated, some may be live action, corny, some of it may be whatever. But it's uh, it's up to the person who's contributing their particular ten seconds. Yeah, you know this. It's fun. This is <clears throat> where the where and when the internet is good. Yeah. Right. Like it's just endless entertainment in very creative ways. And That's I would all. watch that. I would watch that. Maybe a little bit of it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing that that makes me think of these compilation. <laughs> movies that i've had to watch over you know my time reviewing movies Mm -hmm. like the abcs of death and vhs um mainly abcs of death because you have every every director or filmmaker gets like five minutes you get a five minute short for a letter in the alphabet related to death yeah and it's just like dude some of them is just like oh god this is the worst thing i've ever seen in five minutes feels like 20. Yeah. <laughs> How can I only be three minutes into this? Oh, Lord. Yeah, right. Like, just <laughs> die already. <laughs> Is this some kind of like meta thing where I'm supposed to die watching this? Because that would actually be more interesting than finishing this five minute clip. M is for mirror. Yeah. It's oh. me. Oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Shall we jump back from the field now? Where we are in the field, Brian. We're leaving the field. Let's go to the middle of 68. And Sam is talking to Long and says, if I recall, you promised me a big payday. I'm here to collect. Um, I wouldn't mind if Sam gave gave Long 
um, a bit more grief, especially now that Bao isn't around to muscle him if he gets out of line. Um, because I feel like Sam's kind of a jerk in the beginning, and I kind of like him being that jerk. Yeah. You know, maybe he says something like, you know, when when Long says, what are you doing here? And he says something like, you know, not getting caught. How about you? You know, just something to kind of be flipping about it. Um, or maybe re- he renegotiates like he's just an unfeeling a-hole. Hmm. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, I never liked your brother. He doesn't have to say that. But, you know, hey, gee, Long, sorry to hear about your brother. What do you say if I break you out of, pr- out of prison, I get your portion too. Just like he's the single-minded thing. And um, it pays off with like a, a death that we all really want to see. You know what I mean? Like this is the this is the guy that we all want to see die. There's always that guy, you know, that in, in every one of these movies like this, <clears throat> where you're just like, oh, I wonder how he's gonna get it. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be cool. And I, I want I want to really dislike Sam. Mm, I don't know about you, yeah. but but uh, I feel like he's got that kind of ability to just go a little bit beyond taste. You know, that's not a bad it. idea. Because here he's he's actually pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like he's not that cool. Long's cool. <laughs> Can't have two cool guys on the team. No, not that cool. Yeah. Long's alpha cool. <laughs> All right. That's. Uh, um, I'll save that meta conversation for a different movie. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, Can you just imagine that the the cool guy takes aside the other cool guy? Hey, man, you're a little too cool. <laughs> I'm the cool guy. Yeah, yeah. And then he just like shows the script. See? <laughs> yeah. Cool guy. Other cool guy. That's you. All right? Let's make sure we got our roll straight. Um, they lean on again, the, the wall and it falls down like a set. Exactly. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, the other guy's not aware. Yeah. The, <laughs> wow. We're off here today. Um uh, again, with with Sam at the end, your Confederate said the same. That's why I'm going to bust you out. Just sit tight, wait for my signal. Um, it, again, it just sounds a little more heroic than I want to hear from him. Hmm. But I mean, it, I think if he undermines him somewhere here, just as something, just to be kind of a, you know, a douche, I think that'd be cool. I mean, he could still say this, but I just think it's a little bit too like nice. Like I almost, I, I can almost see Zeke doing this. You know. Totally. Okay. Um, just a question on, on the bottom of 68, where we go to the moonless night, are yeah. we still going to see, uh, any patches of the green glitter or have they kind of faded away at this point? I know you're, hmm. you know, always trying to watch your word count or whatnot. And I know that if you had to add something here, just to kind of say there were patches of the green glitter, yeah, that remained, you know what, that's, gonna, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if they are, idea. I don't, I don't know if it's like kind of been absorbed by now. But I thought it'd be kind of a cool visual, um, like in my head as I was reading it, like the moon gives ri- or gives rise to a uh, a moonless night, but the stars illuminate the you know the glitter, the green glitter, or the glitter on the on the, uh, the right. ground. Yeah, just, yeah. Just to kind of keep us rem- remembering that that happened as well before we get to the courtesans. Okay, I can do that. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so in sixty nine where uh, Sally is having that discussion with Patrick. Again, this is kind of all taking place um, right after all the, you know, the first batch of craziness happened before those guys are rounded up. So I would think that, you know, it would be another inciting factor in terms of why uh, Patrick would go to get a drink. You know, he would mention something about the chaos that, that just ensued. Plus, you know, Jane has been, following me around all day, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? So I think pulling him out of that context uh, felt a little like he was serving a purpose of a story rather than living in the, in the world a little bit. Mm. I think, I think he would have just one line to just, you know, something, something to, to mention what's been going on. <coughs> yeah. I can change it up. You can say, have you seen what's going on out there? It's pandemonium. And I'm not just talking about Jane. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. And on top of that, I've got this ugly whatever. On top of that, but not on top of me. Exactly. Hopefully. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So Patrick sees the acidic hiss and sees the guy looking like him, looking like through him 
she yeah. feels a little uneasy and he says maybe i'll just go home after all um this line didn't really land for me man okay uh i think he'd be kind of weirded out or something it just seemed like i need to move patrick to somewhere else to make something else happen um and i know he doesn't want to draw attention to it because then other people might see it okay you know so maybe he like responds to no this day is just too weird for me you know what i mean like i uh, maybe i'll just get out of here maybe i'll just go home maybe i'll skip the drink or something but you know he's got the craziness that just happened he's got jane that he just acknowledged and now he's got this this spit he's like i'm out <laughs> you know what i mean yeah um which i think was the intent behind this but it, it read as if um it just it just didn't really feel like it was part of it wasn't really a reaction to what he just saw okay hmm all right and if you want and if you want to uh save lines you could just remove sally's after that yeah I could. I don't know. i'm just saying i know you're trying <laughs> i'm trying to be cognizant and respectful of the line count for you no no i guess <laughs> i'm not um it it would make sense that you know given given the entire context of the conversation that this guy's coming in at an off, an off time when he would normally go home i mean it's not the end of the week the reason sally brings that up is because she knows he has to go to work the next day mm -hmm. right at least yeah. that's the subtext right yeah 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 i got that um so if if we already know that going home is the alternative to being here I, doesn't it make sense that if he's being looked at strangely by this guy with acidic spit that Patrick would say, you know what, I'm going to go home? I would say maybe if it's just the guy looking at him, but he sees acidic spit, which is not something you ever see. Well, he so he doesn't necessarily know. I, that is for us to see. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Okay. I thought he saw that it was this. Maybe you know, he does. Maybe he does. Maybe it's like, whoa. That's that's strange, right? Like, or that's kind of gross. Like, it's meant to be subtle. It's not meant to be like, you know, it's just streaming from this guy's mouth, like, like alien. You know what I mean? Honestly, even if you just added gross, maybe I'll just go home after all. Just something there where he acknowledges what just happened. Like, this is nasty or something. I don't know what an Irishman of that period would say, but... Uh, Judging on how long, how long that looks it. worse than haggis. I don't know. Do they eat haggis? Or is that a Scottish thing? I think it's a Scottish thing. Oh, okay. Well, it, well, that's what do they eat? That's disgusting in Ireland. <coughs> I don't know. Damn it! Doesn't matter. You can address it later. But I just wanted to bring you the bring your attention to it. Okay. Uh. All right. So, okay, so in the middle of 69, Patrick has just left Sally Salone and he looks around timidly. Um, so, uh, it wasn't timidly, it, it was cautiously before. Ah, much better. <laughs> yeah, it was cautiously before, but it pushed everything, and I was like, ah, all of these words are necessary. And so, now I changed it to the tip. This is what happens, folks. This is what happens. It. It's amazing how the size of a word suddenly changes the direction of how actors are meant to do things in a movie. All right. So I think it's going to be kind of uh, neither here nor there soon because this was this this section kind of confused me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had to read it a couple of times to understand. Um, at first I was like, okay, this must be the you who he was talking talking about as a person as an infected <clears throat> but you meant it as a yuhu that is said yes and i didn't read it like that because of you know our previous conversations right. and then I, as i was reading it here um it just it just confused me a little bit okay okay so my my guess is that you were trying to reveal to the reader a little bit you know yeah what these people were so you're trying to put a little surprise in them for them which which is great um but it needs I more think words 
I don't know if it needs more words. I mean, one thing you could do is there are a couple of things you could do. Um, you could rewrite it so that it's more like, you know, a courtesan, courtesan standing on the, on the nine lives veranda calls you who to Patrick, you know, so it's a, just really clear rather than making it sound almost like a noun, a you who draws. Yeah, no, I get it. Really what it should be, if I'm trying to direct the viewer's eye or the reader's mind's eye yeah. is a you who or someone someone calls out you who uh from off screen basically okay. right that's way that's the way it's supposed to i mean if if we are viewing this as written and using cautiously instead of timidly basically patrick comes out <clears throat> and he's looking left and right and then suddenly he hears you who right and maybe that startles him because he's like oh is that is that jane but then the camera reveals that the courtesan is standing on the other on the veranda. That's right. the sequence of visuals. Um, so I, I could make it very succinct, just the way you, you phrased it. <coughs> but you know, I'm trying to give direction to the cinematographer, I guess, of how it's it's meant to be looked at. Or the reader, you know, I yeah. understand what you're trying to do. Yeah, um, I just think it leads to confusion more clear. The, the other thing it could do is and I, this is not probably something you don't want to do is Curtis in one off screen you who right you know? exactly I was trying yeah. to limit that because it's like I'm gonna Anytime have a character <laughs> you know and not only does it eat up space but now I'm gonna create a character who's right. just gonna have this one thing no multiple characters because they're like three well, that's what them. I mean and like every time I do it you know <clears throat> when there's like 10 of them on screen Right. So I thought that I thought, you know, handling it as um, just just handling it a little differently would be better. Yeah. OK. But it's, it's just a little bit confusing. But I definitely like cautiously. And I think if you just kind of introduce the who's um, that are being spoken or, you know, um, you say you who I, I, I kind of hear it as you more like this long kind of however they're going to do it. Yeah. 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 But I like that you did. I like that you did it here, and then later we learn. Oh, okay, the you who infected. You know, that's that's kind of cool because you don't know that yet. Right. So I I got what you're trying to do there. Um, okay, so I did have a question about the. Do you do you want to do any re reveal here about either the uh, the women, the courtesans who are you hooing in terms of their looks or plain Jane? Because I didn't know what Plain Jane was looking like here, which is kind of what we talked about. Yeah. At the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Well. I, I kind of like the idea that we don't see the courtesans yet. We just hear them. But then Plain Jane shows up and maybe even she, maybe she even, uh, what, what happened? Remind me what happened to her earlier. Oh, she drank the love potion. All right. So she could look normal. That's what I mean. You know, I don't want the 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 infected and the undead who are obvious yeah um like they're farther along in their infection they present themselves you know like they look really messed up yeah, like yeah. the headbangers of course they've smashed their faces the the courtesans you know they've got the bony claws now because they've been scratching at things and yeah, yeah. now their fingertips are just sharpened bone uh you know that kind of thing so obviously they get put in the abandoned storefront the other people who are turning you know i want the i want their presentation to be more in their acting um you know i think we can do some makeup effects you know if, like maybe i can say plain jane uh is looking even more gaunt or something to that effect right oh, i don't even i don't even know if it's necessary to be honest with you yeah. I, I like that she kind of looks normal um something that is more uh important though is so from a from a reader's perspective, I guess it makes sense. But from a viewer's perspective, uh, it's pretty easy to it, it's it's difficult to understand who Plain Jane is when she shows up and says he loves me, unless they're just like very quick and can can remember, like oh okay, this is the girl who's been chasing after him that, that he talked about because we just heard all these yoo-hoos. right? Right. So I think it might confuse because they're all female, and then you're going to see another female, which could be like one of those people who's been you hooing mm. you know, is all, all of a sudden, you know, smash cut right in his face. Right. You know what I mean? So if there's some sort of reaction 
that's um that patrick says like you know to help to help the audience remember who she is you okay. know he, like starts backing away from her rather than running away frightened he's like backing away and saying jane you know i'm just not that into you shar, 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 yeah, exactly. whatever, whatever he says but something just to remind the reader and audience who this person is instead of just like boom bolting you know what i mean okay okay he can bolt like after he says you know after he says he loves me not but even if he's running is it you know what if what if she has a flower and that's her thing she's always carrying this flower that she's pulling the petals off and maybe it's the same flower from the beginning but it has less petals Mm -hmm. as the movie goes on and then when she's fully turned it has no more petals so she uses patrick as her as her flower (laughs) <laughs> right no i love the visual um i just <clears throat> it, it won't be as big of a deal for the reader to be honest because they're reading plain James, yeah so yeah they know that's her no no i get it so not that big of a deal but i don't know if he's gonna run away um frightened of her because why would he be frightened if he's just like annoyed with her and okay just wants, her to, wants her to leave uh startled how about startled or maybe he doesn't run. How about Patrick walks away briskly, startled and unnerved, <laughs> disquieted. <coughs> unnerved is good. Okay. <laughs> Patrick walks away briskly. He quietly walks away, disquieted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's get into Boone and Prophet here. Um... There are a couple of just little minor wor- words. I'm not going to talk about those. Just ideas with you. So hang on a second. Did you just do some research for this Hamilton class three? Sounds like you researched. Uh, I did research and the dates are off, right? And I didn't want to use official names mm. um, and then have some like safe historian or vault historian. Like, oh, the Diebold class three didn't exist until 10 years after your movie. This movie sucks. <laughs> Hey man, any press is good press. I think you should call it the class four at that point. <laughs> With magnetic locks and like a electronic timer. Yeah, exactly. The keypad. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> All right, by Cole. <laughs> There's just a guy standing next to it, just shoveling. Shoveling it in. <laughs> Things like glowing every time he puts it in. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. How weird. A lot of my notes turn like these into white. All right. So on 71, oh, there's a little typo on my note, but it's okay. Um, so this this uh, speech that Everett gives, yeah. this whole interaction, this for me was the highlight of the five pages. Yeah, of course. And, and This uh, was uh, inspired. This was not in there in the, my to-do list. Like it oh, yeah. was just going to be, hey, town's going back to normal yep yep and that's it that was going to be the dialogue but then i thought i could add a little bit of something here no this is the best part of the of the writing by far yeah um and uh uh i just love i love when you put little points in there like that too you know points that are not just for stan points that are for the audience right you know little learnings in there i I thought that was really cool Uh, my only question on this was the last line of Everett's last, um, uh, yeah. uh, last, last graph. Sooner or later, someone that you care about is going to get hurt. I would recommend here um, doing one of two things. Striking it altogether, because I think it's strong without it. Yeah. Or drawing in something a little bit more personal for Stan, if you feel like that's that you really wanted to hit it on the head a little bit. You know, like I assumed, and I can't remember her name, I apologize. Rebecca. I, okay, so I assumed he's talking about Rebecca here. Hmm. And he could say something like, you know, think about it. Not all men can see uh, past a woman's profession or something like that. Um, you know, kind of insinuating that eventually someone's going to look at her wrong and something's going to happen to her as well. So I like if it kind of goes one direction or all the way goes away. So I hear you. Uh, it's meant to tie into the visual that. I know it's not re- even it's not really related like uh, that I, I struggled with this as well like it doesn't have a 
like a personal meaning for him. Yeah. Right. Because his family didn't die due, a fa due to a failure of the law or a, mm -hmm. a failure of up upholding the law. Yeah. And there's no personal value for Stan because he doesn't it's it's a little too abstruse. Right. Like it's not. It, it doesn't hit the nail on the head with like the Rebecca thing. I mean, I like what your your example there, uh, but it's meant to tie into he as they're talking, he looks up and he sees his new family, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. And okay. that's where his mind goes that, you know, we have to uphold the law to protect the people we care about. Which is, and it, you know, it's meant to show it's meant to tie Everett more to Maggie and Tommy. Now, I like that it leads into that. Yeah, we can we can uh, rearrange this. This doesn't have to necessarily say what it says. He could say something like, you know, um, you know, you, you don't do it for you. You do it for the people you care about or something. Yeah. Yeah, something like that would be yeah. good. Yeah. And then, and then maybe <clears throat> I, I like that you're where you were going with it. And I, I think that that is not necessarily coming through. So maybe. Uh, adding in a line of action as well and maybe taking a line out of, of action away from the one that follows it. So after, you know, he says it's, it's everyone act for themselves acting as judge, jury, and executioner, Everett sees Maggie, Ray, and Tommy at the entrance of the hotel. <clears throat> and then he says the next line and then Everett walks towards them and greets them. You know what I mean? So then it kind of mm. draws the reader into yeah, now yeah. he's applying it there. I think that'd be strong and I don't think it's really going to cost you much um, oh, it will, Brian. It will. It shouldn't really. That's a, a paragraph break, so it's a blank line. It's one line, and then you have one, to have, add Everett. Line. Everett continued. <clears throat> cool. <laughs> Worth it. <Because laughs> Worth I, it. Because I because I think that's going to be it, but it's an emotional point, and that's no, I why get I like <clears throat> now. Now I didn't read it like this at all when you said it, right? But now that you're saying it, I would definitely keep it. And, and rearrange it a little bit to really hit that emotional point. All right. Because I, I like that that kind of gives him a little bit more. It's it's taking it from the abstract for him into something that means that's really possibly meaningful to him, which is going to be even worse when he loses them later. So I would I would definitely give the real estate for something like that. Okay. You sold me on doing more work. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so towards the bottom of 71, a, a small thing. When uh, when Sam uh, pretends to hold a cigarette to his mouth, yeah, is there a reason he's pretending and just doesn't hold the cigarette to his mouth? He doesn't. I mean, I, there's no real reason. I just thought it was cool that, oh. you know, he, he's <laughs> doing a little bit of like, you know, a little, little bit of uh, chicanery there. Like he's, he's thinking on his feet, you know, like, oh, God, I don't smoke. You know, <laughs> it seemed like an uncomplicated. It's dark. It's a that's a little bit of detail. These are the things that actors will hang on to, man. Mm, all right, it that's gonna like make or break the character. Keep it then. Uh, <laughs> I can remove it. It's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> It'll save me a space. I could probably get rid of that whole half of a, a line. It'll just say he holds a cigarette to his mouth. Yeah, but that, what does he do with the two... cigarette, Brian? Now that we have this mouth. prop. Now you got this prop the actor has to deal with. Knocks the guy out and then takes the mat, takes the uh, takes the light and lights it up. Oh, that's cool. Knocks what? Takes the light and Knocks lights the up a cigarette. Out. And now yeah. he's just acting with a cigarette in his mouth. No, yeah, he's he's doing his thing. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> he can take it out while he's talking. Well, I'm just saying, oh, man, that's one this more is prop. Be good too. Now, now you got this guy running now, around this is the set. Be good. Huh? He could look at a cigarette. This is gonna be good. See. <laughs> Flavor Dude, country. Uh, pulled focus. Dude, whatever. Do whatever you want on this one. I don't feel strongly about it. <laughs> um, from at the bottom of 71, when uh, the Curtis and census Sam. Yeah. Do you, do you want her to, to kind of get it, get the reader to understand what that correlation is? Do you want her to do a you who from inside as well? Oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that. That is... That is not a bad idea. Huh. Huh. I'll think about that. Okay. The note's there, so you can reference it later. All right. Let's go to the last page. 
It's all education. Mostly. Yeah, that's fine. Um, all right. So my only, my big issue with this, I guess my medium issue with this is that Sam feels a little bit, I wouldn't say necessarily unprepared, but it feels like he's taking some unnecessary risks. And you yeah. mentioned, you went, you mentioned later that, uh, you know, there are some horses that get filled and eaten. Um, Sam seems to be actually a pretty intelligent guy. So I would think that, uh, you know, cause he's aware of what's, what's been happening. Cause he talked to Zeke and Sally, maybe he sold a horse and he mounted it, you know, before breaking off the, the last plank just to ensure his escape. You know, it just seems a little bit, you know, risky if Zeke and Sally say, yeah, there are even some guys running around or, you know, they're fast and I don't know, just it seems like an unnecessary risk that I wouldn't take if I was Zeke. That's <clears> that's Sam for you though, man. Come on, you know? He plays mm. it fast and loose. Fast I'm gonna break loose, this he's still guy after out. The money. Huh? He's still after the money. He's still after the money. Um, I don't know if he's dead. So you're saying he should save a horse to get away from this area? Uh just just yeah. Does that ruin other things? Well, I mean, now it's something I have to account for. Like, why? where does the horse go afterward? Like, he just, ah, get out of here, horse. Then he gets eaten down the street. Anyway, uh, uh, I hear what you're saying. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of like it. That It's that kind of, like, you know, daring do of, of Sam. Mm-hmm. You know, he's kind of reckless, and that's what this whole thing is. It's it meant it's meant to be chaos, <clears throat> and so for him, is, is there is there something you could put in there just to kind of show that he is doing things intentionally, um, intentionally reckless? Well, the fact that he's like, oh, this is gonna be good, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you know, he wants anarchy because he needs that distraction <clears throat> to bust out long. I'm surprised you didn't put your word in there. What's my word? Like when I think of Renee, I always think of perfect. Uh, that's not what Sam would say, though. <laughs> Sam's not about perfection. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, like I said, it's minor, so I'm not going to fight. For, if I'll fight for it, I feel it's necessary. All right. Well, I mean, I'll consider it. Don't don't get me wrong. Just because I'm bringing up a counterpoint doesn't mean. No, it's... I understand. I just I can't stand strongly on it if I don't feel that. It's not that big of a deal to me. Okay. So I got a little bit confused about the soldiers here okay. um, in terms of, in terms of uh, where they came from, who was standing there. So we have a spitter, excuse me, a soldier who's outside the, um, outside the door who gets hit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then uh, where's the part where the soldiers nearby, where is that again? Okay. Other out, outpost soldiers arrive and draw their weapons. <clears throat> Um, okay, so two things on this. I, I don't know if we need to draw to draw the line between what's happening and why the outpost out- soldiers are arriving. You know, like hearing the noise or hearing the chaos or hearing the the violence, other outpost soldiers arrive and draw their weapons, blah, blah, blah. So to make it a little bit more strong or, or more clear that, uh, that that's why they're coming here, not that they're just, you know, making their rounds and they, oh, it's my turn to see what's going on here. You know what I mean? Uh, number one. And number two, uh, w- wouldn't this outpost be protected by Stan's men? Well, Stan doesn't have men. Stan's he just a sheriff. Men. Yeah, but he's got guys. No, he doesn't have any guys. What are you talking about? The guys, the guys he sent into uh, the place to get the the munitions and whatnot. Yeah, no, that's the, the posse, Brian. <clears throat> Those are volunteers. So they don't work for him. No, they just part time work for him. Yeah, he has no men. No, the sheriffs never have any men. Mm. At least, I mean, I don't know if in reality they had men. <clears throat> you know, like maybe big towns had a a deputy. Mm. Or maybe so a guy, maybe maybe two deputies, but um, but it was never like a police station. Yeah, yeah. no, I know that. Yeah, it probably just worked out of the jail, or he did. 
All right. Well, I just think that something to draw the other outpost soldiers there that, I mean, I, I took it as he's, they're hearing what's going on and they're like leaving where they're at post where they're posted and come yeah. over to help out. Um, but again, you can make it a little more clear if you feel like it, if you want to, um, let me just skip through my notes. Let's just kind of talk about that. Uh, so in terms of the headbangers, right. Just kind of threw something in there. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. I just thought, you know, why are these monsters in this movie? What is their purpose? You know, like, go ahead. What is your note? It's really, I, I don't really care why they're, not, why they're in here just because I think they're cool. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I The thing I threw in here, <clears throat> uh, I didn't originally plan on. Like, I just mm -hmm. had them be guys who smash their faces against things. But yeah. now I, they have... Uh, there's a reason for that. Like, I don't have the... Or the origin doesn't really make sense, right? Like, it's just a strain of the infection, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But the their unique trait now has utility within the movie. That it's right. almost like, you know, we know, oh, shoot them in the head and they die. But these guys, because of how they've, they've smashed their skulls, it's created, like, extra, like, skull... Like the bones have moved up over their foreheads or whatever. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm trying to get away with. And so it's going to take a couple of shots from the front to hit their brain and kill them. But we'll find out later when uh, Everett saves Long that because he's standing behind them and uh, they're trying to get to Long, he's able to, to take them take out, out from, from, yeah. from behind. I love that they're here. I think it's such an interesting visual. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, me that too. I think and it's going to look so awesome. Well, it's not only that. It's like you've got some real distinct um, villains here, you know, with the, the yu girls, the uh, the spitters, and the headbangers. Yeah. That's very easy to follow. Right. Like a reader and, and even a, someone who's viewing. I think that's cool. So my uh, my only comment on this was it read a little bit uh, oddly, just just mm. the, the order of words, but... But they seem, but they seem almost armored by bone from where they had been smashing their faces against walls. Um, oh, okay. So I, what I what I was suggesting here is having something about exposed bone or or an exposed skull. You know, to just really drive that. You know, you're seeing the the, the bone here oh. um, visually. I think okay. would be cool. Yeah, I could totally do that. Okay, something on my Mac needs to be optimized. I just want to make sure in the middle of our recording that that, can't, that notification came up. Don't blame the system, <laughs> Brian. How is it supposed to know we're doing something this important? Yeah. All right, so Everett is walking back to the entrance. Oh, that's nothing. All right, so the last the last description here about the abandoned storefront. Um when you mention here that the bodies of town folk litter the ground, yeah, while the undead. F so why were the town folk killed? I thought it was just the, the soldiers. Um, I would have thought that the town folk had fled and listed well, there from earlier. Uh, so this area, while I know I didn't do a, a very good job in describing it in mm. detail, but basically the idea is that people are avoiding this area because of this unsavoriness with the undead and the infected people, right? Mm. But it's not in a desolate part of town. Like, there's still, like, shops here, or maybe people live in, you know, some shacks around here. Mm. Uh, that's why... So there are people here, right? Like, um, it's nighttime, you know, maybe they're having dinner or trying to sleep. I don't know. Mm. But it's... There would be, in my mind, there would be people populating this area. And maybe they weren't quick enough to react to the problem. You know, and they ran out of their building. Mm -hmm. They get eaten alive. <clears throat> maybe some men run up because they think they can help. Right. And I mean, that's all happening. <clears throat> Oh, you know, loved ones who are worried about these sick people think yeah. like, well, uh, hope they're not killing Johnny again. Yeah. 
Well, the truth is that, um, and I wrote this about the last line of the script or the, of these pages, the yeah. men fight their way out. That last sentence could be a five minute scene. I mean, you never know what they're going to do with oh, it. Oh, totally. So this totally. whole thing may just be filled in by action. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't that big of a deal. Most of the things I mentioned here are not big of a deal. Um, so really, that's all I have for the pages themselves. Um, the only thing that struck me as, as an, kind of an outstanding question um, in terms of the roles is, you know, when, when all of the, um, the infected <clears throat> and the, uh, the undead are in the, the shack together, Yeah. Um, why aren't the zombies interested in eating the infected? Because I, I kind of felt like, I, I, I know that in some cases we've seen infected who aren't dead. Yeah, they yeah. just got like a bite out of them or something like that. Right. And they're, they're turning. So <clears throat> I would imagine that they're in various stages of turning within the building and um, that the zombies might go after them because they have some life left in them. But I don't really understand that, that relationship necessarily. Yeah. I don't know if I need to, but it was just one of the things that kind of uh, a little bit of a scratch on the brain. No, that's fine. Right. Um, so the thing I know uh, this is not explained at all in the movie and it will never be explained in the movie, mm -hmm. but the idea that, you know, when someone is, is, uh, <clears throat> is infected and undead or, and, and the undead, they are being affected by the same thing, um, which is this, I, I don't know. Um, I guess, you right. know what, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm going back and I'm realizing, well, these people got infected by different things, mm -hmm. so it can't necessarily be one disease, right? Right. Um, <coughs> I don't know, Brian, I think, uh, I think you just broke the movie. I think you no, just I mean, broke the quite movie. honestly, when, um, when I was thinking about it, like in my head, I was thinking, well, maybe they can sense that they already have been, you know, they're already on the way. Well, so yeah, that's the idea. There's not appetizing to them. I just didn't know if that was the intention or not, or. Well, that is, that is the intention. You know, if you watch like from dusk till dawn, mm. once the, um, well, maybe dusk till dawn is not the, uh, that was definitely a, a part of the inspiration, but <clears throat> let's think more of, um, uh, World uh, World War Z. Mm -hmm. You saw that, right, with Brad yeah. Pitt? Yeah. Okay. So the, the people who are infected or who have this, like, really bad disease, they are left alone by these creatures because they can sense a virus or they can sense a disease as well. Right. right and so right. it, it plays, a, plays on that idea. Now the logic is kind of collapsing as I'm talking about it mainly because of the different sources for the infection. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how to answer this now. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about it. It was just something that kind of was, was more of a question. I don't think it's a problem with the movie, to be honest with you, because I think that if you're going to go along for this by this point, um, and they're in, the room, they're in that abandoned area together, yeah. um, I, I think that's fine. You know, I don't think many people are really going to question what I just said. Okay. I really don't. I don't think it's as big of a deal as, as I or you have just made it, but I'm, I have to ask you that for the details just because. No, I, I hear you. Job. The thing that bothers me about this question is that this is the question I would ask as like a film reviewer. Mm. Like, wait a second. And it's something that would spark endless debate with friends for me. Like, does that make sense to you? And if like it doesn't happen here, why would it, you know? Yeah. Like, I would just find all the things to poke holes in. <coughs> but hey, a reader and or a Hollywood producer may not yeah. care, so. I don't think they will. There you go. That's all that matters to me now. I mean, you can certainly put a line in there later if you wanted to that a zombie, I don't even know. Dude, Doc That's Murphy can say something. No, uh, no, I think it'd be better to see the action of, you know, an undead passing by and infected, uninterested at some point. 
You know what I mean? Like passing on a meal because he's like, you know. Why do they attack Chief then? At the oh, end. Oh, later? Yeah, well, he, he's infected. Well, he's Indian, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's armed? He's a threat? No, come on, man. It's not Predator. <laughs> it's not Predator. They all just drop their guns all of a sudden. <clears throat> And walk out. Yeah, there's a chopper <laughs> waiting for them. Chopper. I don't know, man. You wrote. You're writing the movie. Oh, and now, now that's what you're gonna throw at me. <laughs> Solve it. <laughs> oh, Bye, man. Oh. See you next week. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well. Um. Maybe you can just Maybe. say simply that they're fighting. They're what? The they're fighting each other in the room. Yeah, I was going to say that. But wouldn't... Uh, I don't know, man. I mean... Okay. Yeah, I guess that can work. They could just be attacking everything, but you know, it's not necessarily going to affect them. Yeah. I don't even know if it's going to play out, to be honest with you. I think that you can very easily answer that question that way, and then... Maybe show something on screen, but I don't think anyone's going to really care. Okay. I don't, I don't think you need to worry about really breaking the movie at all or, or taking away your options of how you want to make, you know, play it out later. No, you know what? It's fine. I can just add that you know, they're boisterous as they, they push and shove at each other mm -hmm. um, with the undead trying to, to bite the infected and the, the infected shoving them away. Yeah, headbanger could just be headbanging oh, uh, yeah, exactly. an undead or something, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects, folks. Brought to you by the sick guy. <laughs> Anyhow, man, um, I think you can see that my questions were relatively small. Um, you know, it's just little tiny polishes, but I think overall this was really cool. And, you know, uh, the reason I read it three or four times is because it read pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was really good. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to what happens next. I love that you're fleshing, the, fleshing out those little points, too, you know, that we talked about. Right. Yeah. But I felt like <clears throat> did a lot here, too. You know, it's like you can flesh out one point over four pages. Right. But I felt like there is a really good mixture here of there's a lot of stuff that has happened and a lot of cool stuff you know to kind of glom onto so right i think this is good man yeah uh i'm pretty happy with uh, the amount of value of these pages totally and i think i've gotten over a hump um where i no longer have to <clears throat> where i no longer have to educate the audience at least mm -hmm. um not not about the really big things right so I think the following pages are just going to, to move. Yeah, you can have fun now. Yeah, exactly. Just like the downhill portion of the movie. Right. Yeah, it's all happening. It's all cool. What happens next? You know, this is the page, page turner part of the movie. This mm -hmm. is the Dan Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Robert Langdon was infected. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to the audiobooks, you get it. Robert Langdon. That's how the guy talks on, on oh. the... Uh, is that how audience. Dan Brown speaks? No, there's he's got a he's got a he's guy. Got a guy. Oh, yeah. okay. And that's how he talks. Rubber Brown <laughs> Robert Brown. <laughs> Robert Lincoln. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. That's how he'd read yours. Nice. Yeah. All right, man. Well, All right, buddy. um I thought yeah, this was a good episode. Still hit an hour and a half for some reason. I can't believe it. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. I don't think I'm gonna do the other thing tonight. I got all dressed up to do it. <laughs> too too tired now. You're too tired. It's four in the morning, four thirty in the morning for me. Hang in there, Brian. Why don't you stay up uh, another hour and then go to sleep? Because I have to have dinner at some point. I'm all out of whack, man. Dude, why do you have to have dinner? Skip dinner. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Be mm. hungry. Go to bed hungry. Look at me, dude. Do I look like I go to bed hungry? Dude, it actually. <laughs> once you get used to that. It, um, you'll, it'll, it'll be an easy lifestyle to adjust to. Like I do it all the time where I'm, it's like getting close to my bedtime. I, I normally try to go to bed around eight or nine. 
everybody because I try to get up super early. But my stomach is just growling. It's like, ah, you know, it's just like a little like fighting in my stomach, right? And I know, I know that when I, I'll go to sleep and when I wake up, I won't be hungry anymore and my stomach will just feel so flat, right? Like you'll just feel like, man, I feel thin. And you just enjoy that feeling every day. It's a feeling you look forward to. So you suffer through the intense pain at night and then you wake up feeling thin you don't look thin but you feel thin and then you slowly become thin fantastic and i love your uh, i love your your uh, optimism <laughs> and with that <laughs> all right brian is there uh, anything else we need to add here no man we're in good shape okay well that was a fantastic episode uh if you enjoyed this episode please give us a like and a subscribe it really helps us grow the channel tell your friends tell your family and we will see you in the next episode word mm -hmm.